What's up, friends? So welcome to another developer interview here on 61 Indie. Uh, this is all part of our 61 Indie Showcase developer interview series that we do. I am Kyle Stevenson from the 61 Indie side, and today we're joined from with two of the developers from Ikeyam, Parth and Sally. Great to meet you. How are you? Good. Really nice good. to meet you yeah. as well. Yeah, thank you so much for allowing us to show off this game. It blew us away when we saw it submitted. It was an easy yes. So what people don't know about it is we have like a process where we cut down the selections because I think we had over a thousand selections or submissions to go through. Uh, this one was a slam dunk from the start. That's how <laughs> that's how excited we are when we saw it. So, but before we get into the game itself. Um, I want you both to tell us a little bit about you and your history as not only just playing games, but how you got into game dev. Uh, why don't we start with you, Parth? Yeah, so I'm Parth Sony. I'm the game director for uh, iKim and one of the co-founders of uh, Thousand Stars. And I'm here with Sally. Uh, do you want to introduce <laughs> <Hi>. yourself? <laughs> yeah, I'm Sally. I'm the art director at Thousand Stars as well as the other co-founder. Uh, Parth and I graduated from the same university back in the day uh, with the Bachelors of Design. And coming out of school, we just really wanted to make video games that were inviting for people. So that's um, how we started the company. We wanted to create games that were inspired by our childhood memories. So I think, Parth, if you would like to share yours... <laughs> Yeah, so I spent like a lot of hot summer days in India, uh, just kind of like hiding out in the little basement uh, with, with my mom playing a lot of the games. And it was it was a great way to uh, beat the heat, but it was a wonderful way to make uh, really great memories with uh, you know, just playing video games with my family. And likewise for me, like I, well, I grew up in Canada and a lot of my experiences are just handheld single player experiences. So... How I would collaborate with my dad is that I would play the simpler levels of video games, and then when it got to like the big bad boss, I would just throw it to him and be like, help me fix it, help me finish it. And that's how we would enjoy video games. So we wanted to evoke like a lot of these memories and these bonding opportunities with uh, our players as well when they play our games. And so that's how we started creating Ikeum, and that's what brought us here today. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I have very similar stories to you both. I would like me and my dad would sit down and play Punch Out, the old NES game. Nice. <laughs> I would do the yeah. earlier bosses, but then he would take over yeah. the harder ones. And same yeah. thing, my how I got introduced to games, a Parth, is I would come down the stairs and hear my mom <laughs> screaming playing mario and yelling at the princess because she kept getting captured and so that's like my first ever memory and how i started loving games so yeah family is a huge yeah. part of my history with games as well mm. um with ikeam yeah. um they have some really unique design choices for the characters uh, can you tell us a bit about where that idea came from for these adorable round little characters yeah so our characters are a collaborative effort with the team uh, it really tapped into a lot of our different skill sets so for me like my art style is more like towards final toys figurines blind boxes and mostly food and desserts i love sweets so a lot of the toys or a lot of the des designs that you'll see for me is generally adorable characters that look edible and tangible uh, but however, like Parth's dad, Arvind, he used to be an architect and he has a huge skill range of art. Like he can do drawing, painting and sculpting. So a lot of his works drew from inspirations of like Indian folk tales, Pahari paintings and Rajasthani art. And now that he has two grandchildren, he wanted the art to kind of tailor more towards them. So I think having to see some of the stuff that I've done, he started digitally drawing like these very round and cute characters. I was very intrigued as to how they would look in 3D, so I kind of just took the designs and started mocking them up. And as we built Ikeum, we finally onboarded Sam, who is our 3D artist. He's very like amazing in film and realism. So we took his skill sets with film and real realism, and we kind of blended it with my stylized approach. So that is how we kind of uh, started this whole design process. for, And th this collaboration is what defined the art style for the rest of our game. I, I, I'm sitting here thinking about the trailer <laughs> yes. and, and the visuals of the game. Why do I see more games that look like this? Like, I, I feel like this is so fresh and inviting. And I'm just curious as to why you think that there's 
not a whole lot of other games that take this style of approach. Oh, I, I mean, that's, that's a bit difficult to answer because I think uh, a, a part of it is that, uh, you know, we, we try to incorporate, like, everybody's skill sets. Uh, when we when we create our game and we try to bring in uh, like you know all the all the team members uh, sort of views and lived experiences as well so we want to kind of like sit around uh, think about like next projects we want to make yeah, that's that's a big sort of part of the process um, I think and especially in this case uh, like the, the X factor was like my dad's painting like he hasn't painted since uh, like we immigrated to Canada so you know when my nieces were born he sort of like picked up uh the pencil by being inspired by the things that sally was working on you know and it's just kind of like bouncing these styles back and forth and really taking interest in each other's work is i think where it's where it's gotten us to kind of have this sort of a defined look for for games and studios in general that's awesome yeah um the team over there at Thousand Star Studios have worked with on two games previously, both released on Itch.io, uh, Milky Way VR and Bodabot, both very cute titles. Uh, <laughs> what made the team decide to go with a Bollywood theme for, for Icam? And in that same vein, why an RPG? So when we decide on projects at Thousand Stars, uh, as I would mentioned, we kind of try to ensure that we're creating something very charming, very whimsical, and has a piece of our own story, a culture, and our skill sets into it. So we were toying with a few ideas for our first big project, and I'd expressed interest to Sally in creating a world that reflected Indian stories and cultural aspects that I've grown up with, and I hadn't really seen many games do that. Bollywood and Indian cinema in general is a very iconic part of that culture, and it's something that uh, I've grown up with and I'm a huge fan of. So I wanted to infuse some of the, the storytelling mechanics that they have into our game's own core system. The RPG element was just a perfect genre for the team. I mean, it's a style of game that everyone in the team really enjoys and we're really familiar with. And it allowed us to express our vision sort of in the best possible ways. You know, for example, it gives the player perfect agency to like walk around, talk to people, learn more about the world and what makes it so special. And you know, gives you space to finally learn why angry uncles and aunties are actually upset. So it was, it was a perfect match. <laughs> and I think also for me, like I grew up in Canada, so when I, the schooling system here, I didn't really get to hear a lot of like these Indian folk tales or any of like other cultures' folk tales and stories. So it was a great way for me specifically, and I'm pretty sure the rest of our team to sort of learn and tap into different cultural stories that we've never heard of before. Yeah, like to that point, I, I obviously know of Bollywood and how huge it is and how important it is to Indian culture, but it very rarely breaks through to like the states outside of like the bigger hits like RRR, I believe. Uh, it's like the big one. So having yeah. it in game form, I think is perfect. Just another way to bring it to life in another art yeah. form. Exactly. Um, the Steam page mentions that and we, we just touched upon it. Uh, the game was inspired by Indian cinema. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the inima, Indian cinema inspired, um, how it inspired the battle portions of the game? Yeah, so the general premise of the game is you help disgruntled citizens in your adventures. They become your number one fan. Everybody's your number one fan. And you work together with them uh, during the battles in order to take down the big bad. So that's, that's the overall loop. And a big design pillar we wanted to keep in mind was when you're gathering citizens, uh, we wanted to make that journey feel special and endearing and not necessarily like a checklist. So we turned to Indian cinema for inspiration. And there's a really fun storytelling mechanic that they use where you'll have these like really intense emotional moments between characters and everyone's going to break out into these little dances and they'll work together to solve the problems. And that felt very whimsical for us, and it provided sort of a great base to develop uh, our battle system. So, you know, instead of quests feeling like a checklist, now there's a little full of stories that are told through these cute animations and silly dance moves. And the premise also started bleeding a lot into uh, our exploration mechanics, where players get to keep some of the dance poses outside the battle. So you can, you know, go around the world striking these poses in order to strike conversations, learn about secrets, uh, and alter your surroundings. 
That's great. It sounds like a great adventure that I would love to go on right now. <laughs> uh, the main goal of the game is to spread kindness and, and recruit members of the vil a village to help defeat demons. Um, how did the team decide to go with side quests to spread kindness rather than do something like, you know, you're going to go fight this monster and then, you know, grab this item and bring it back to, you know, like why, why, why spread kindness in a video game? I feel like that's kind of a, a rare thing these days in games. Yeah, so so a big exciting part for RPG for our team in general are are the side quests. You know, these are the stories of people that help your hero become stronger, but their effect isn't always directly shown. So we wanted to evolve that sort of concept and the concept and element where uh, you come up with an idea where you actually have to work together with these people that you've helped in order to overcome challenges. You know, this is their story as much as it is yours. Uh, so we came up with the battle system where you dance against these uh, disgruntled citizens to dazzle them. And when they show up as your fans in the stand, the stands, they sometimes become hyped and start taking their own turns. So it makes the battles feel very like hilarious, chaotic, and treat the background crowd as like a, their own individual entity. And sometimes it'll look like, you know, you're about to lose a battle and then like, bam, you, know, you got three citizens uh, hyped up, ready to take the turn and just completely changes the flow of the battle. Um, and it builds this like very unique progression system where the more people you help, essentially the more powerful your core team becomes. And I kind of want to say that this really reflects in real life as well. You can never really do anything alone. If you have a community backing you up, you have people supporting you. I mean, share that little bit of kindness to them as well. I'm pretty sure you're all going to be able to succeed and grow together absolutely beautiful love it um the games can be based in ancient india uh what are a few things that players expect to see when they're wandering around the world and uh, follow up to that one do you have a favorite that you're excited for people to find <laughs> yes uh yeah. definitely a lot of peacocks <laughs> you have a lot of peacocks in the world and they're hidden all over the place and we're excited to see how many peacocks people find um, there are also certain architectural locations, uh, such as the Konark Sun Temple or the climb of uh, Kedarnath that we've been very inspired by and sort of created our own architectural pieces that kind of play home, uh, pay, pay homage to some of these, you know, beauties of these wonders, uh, so just a small fashion. And of course, everything will have a little pinch of uh, whimsy added to it to make it, you know, icon special. Uh, we also have these like fun little festivals in the game, such as the, the color festival of uh, Holi, and one of my personal favorite, which is like the it's like a sibling festival called Rakshabandhan, um, that players can sort of experience through various quests in the game. Sally, do you have a, a favorite thing that you're excited for people to find? I'm excited for the acts of kindness. Just there you I want to see how many people can go out and you know be kind to others. We've added an option where you could theoretically be mean to them as well through narrative. <laughs> okay. But play however you like. You know, it's an option. <laughs> <laughs> I I really hope when you get like the feedback of how many people choose to be kind over anger that the anger <laughs> one is so low. <laughs> and Fingers crossed. Yeah, Fingers it, crossed. Honestly, though, like in just the internal play testing we've done, it's, it's been one of the more requested features. Like, can I be oh. mean to people? And we're like, why? But sure, I guess. <laughs> Such a unique request when they're playing the game. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Uh, well, before we end the interview, I would like to ask uh, the final question. And I want to preface this by saying there is no right or wrong answer. We ask all the de developers we interview the same question, and we get a different answer every single time. But to the both of you, what does being indie mean to you guys? So <laughs> overly ambitious projects made by a very small crew with big starry eyes. Uh, then, you know, you're certified indie. Uh, just jo jokes aside, from the just like the team size and, and budget. I think the creative process uh, driving the project for us, especially, is what makes it indie. Uh, like a big part of Ikeum's charm and whimsy sort of comes from how everyone in the team had their fingerprints all over the project. So, for example, Sam, our uh, 3D artist, he, he's an exceptional lighting artist and a filmmaker. He helped shape a lot of the, the world for Ikeum. And if we were a bigger team, his role definitely would have been more restricted. 
Uh, but the fact that we have everyone's kind of flavor of skills and expertise and creative expressions driving uh, the project is what has made it so special. And for us, it's made it so indie. It's almost like the project has molded itself to include everybody's personalities. Yeah, I think like generally people hear indie, they think small teams, low budget, short games. And it's kind of like Parth said, it's so much more than that. Uh, as like an indie, we get to be innovative. We get to drive our innovations and creativity for the project. We get to be flexible and pivot our designs to ensure that our visions come true collaboratively. And we can also cooperatively uh, work together to kind of just be incredible, talented game makers who all share the same vision. And I think it's this unique dynamic that we have here that's what makes us indie. Well said, you nailed it. It's a tough question, you both nailed it, awesome. Um, well, thank you once again for allowing us to show it off in the showcase, but if anyone uh, is interested to learn more about ICAM, uh, where can they go to find out this information and when can we expect to play it? Uh, you can definitely uh, go on our Steam page, uh, just type ICAM, it, it'll, it'll show up with playable characters. Uh, please wish list. Please wish list. Thank you. <laughs> um, please wish list. And we uh, are working on a public demo at the moment, and we're we'll, hopefully we'll be you know ready in the next couple of months to to announce it and get our hands on it. And we're very excited for everyone to play it. Amazing. Yes. Wishlisting means the world. We've been telling you this for years. Please go do that. Find all the information on the game on our website, 61indie.com. On the specific page for ICAM, you got everything there, all socials, Steam page, all that jazz, do all the things. Um, if you want to watch all the other developer interviews, go over to our YouTube channel, 61indie, over there. We've got 20 or so interviews from this year's showcase. And speaking of the showcase, if you haven't watched it yet, what are you doing? Go watch it and see all the games and the awesome trailers that we showed off. And uh, remember to wishlist them all and support these wonderful devs who are making great things. Um, until next time, we love you very much. Stay safe and play more indies. Bye. <laughs>